Back to school. Brush up on the latest turf grass research. Presented by Syngenta. When was the last time you sampled the full profile of your sand-based putting greens? Many people rarely, if ever, sampled the profile all the way down to the pea gravel layer. Glenn Obear, master graduate student at UW-Madison, discovered through USGA-funded research that you might be missing the full picture if you fail to fully sample the profile. In 2008, I had the wonderful opportunity of doing an internship on the Big Island of Hawaii, and I got to do a lot of fun things, um, but I also worked. <laughs> and uh, on the golf course, we started noticing really thin areas of turf, um, especially in low-lying areas uh, of putting greens. When we aerified the putting greens, this is a picture of a green with the aerification plugs on top. Um, again, with the light, it's a little tough to see, but in this, uh, down here, this is kind of a low pocket, and uh, we see the soil cores are a lot darker, so we found a uh, black layer in this low area, an anaerobic activity. On the left-hand side, we see the darker cores from that low spot, where we have some black layer occurring. On the right, these are uh, lighter colored cores from a more higher elevation spot in the putting green. We were trying to uh, just you know figure out why is this happening. This golf course is only five years old. Uh, it was it's a very high end golf course, so it was aerified twice a year, top dressed weekly or bi weekly. So it, you know you wouldn't expect organic matter or thatch to be an issue here. But what we did was we sampled the profile all the way down to the pea gravel layer, and what we found, much to our surprise, was at the sand and pea gravel interface, this is, you know, it's about 15 inches deep, um, we saw this reddish layer, uh, which turned out to be iron oxide precipitate. This layer was basically blocking all water infiltration out of the root zone, and we saw anaerobic activity right above this layer. There are two types of iron in the soil, iron 2 and iron 3. Iron 3, or oxidized iron, is a solid precipitate which is a reddish-orange color that can gather at the pea gravel layer of a green. That pea gravel layer, as we said, doesn't hold water, so there is lots of oxygen in that layer. And in the presence of oxygen, that iron 2 is, is converted back to iron 3, but to an amorphous iron 3, so almost like a fine powder. And that's going to cement sand and pea gravel together and block water infiltration out of the profile. Obear created a research study with samples from over 30 locations from across the U.S., including the O.J. Noah Research Facility. As it turned out, there were multiple examples of this iron layer blockage found. To sample the profile down to the pea gravel layer, Obear built a custom soil probe. Usually when we take soil, set, so, uh, soil samples, we're using a T probe, something that only samples the top three to six inches. So if you only sample the top part of the profile, you're totally missing this big problem that's happening at the bottom. And this is a, a hot zone of uh, soil chem chemical changes because you have this oxygenated pea gravel layer. So you can have lots of uh, oxidation or reduction. Basically, that's how rust forms. You can have stuff like that happening at that boundary. So it's really important to, to think about sampling the full profile. If you just take a PVC pipe and sharpen the bottom, drill a hole in the top, uh, pound it in the green all the way down to the pea gravel layer, uh, put a piece of rebar in and pull it out, you'll have a soil sample. Then you can stick it in a little uh, block like this, pick up a little oscillating saw, this is $40 at the hardware store, and then you just buzz it right open and you'll have a profile display like this. Doing this every year or so, snapping some pictures, will really allow you to see how uh, your, things are changing in the soil over time. Through his research, Obear was able to discover one possible cause of iron layering. Every time that you, we saw this layer in a soil profile, you pull up their water and there's iron precipitated in the water. And when you send this, this water in for a water analysis, uh, the iron will probably come back as zero or basically nothing. Why? Because it, after maybe only a week or two, it's going to precipitate like this. And then at the uh, testing facility, they filter it so it's gone. So it doesn't go through and get sampled. So there is a way to sample it, but if you just send in a generic water sample and say, oh, give me you know, all the irrigation water uh, results, they're not going to give you, they're not going to uh, treat it with acid or anything to, to keep that iron in the solution. So it's, you know, I, we don't exactly know how prevalent it is. I said 20% of the courses I sampled had it. I don't know if that's going to hold up as I do more and more, but uh, it's, it's, it's a big issue for people because 
It's, this is basically impermeable to water. Uh, it really blocks water infiltration down through the profile. So then you start to see things, anaerobic, anaerobic activity, black layer, really thin, uh, shallow turf roots. We did some calculations and figured that if you have 10 parts per million in a water sample of iron, and a reasonable range is zero to 50 parts per million, if you have 10 parts per million and irrigate 12 inches per year, you're putting down about five pounds of iron per thousand onto your greens. And that's that's uh, uh, equates to a pretty high rate for fertility, but it's in the same ballpark. So yeah, I mean, whether you're putting it out through a sprayer or it's going in through your irrigation system, uh, sprayer, that's easy to fix. You stop doing it if that's a problem, but irrigation system, then you have a much bigger problem on your hands. So I think, yeah, whether it's through fertility or through the, the irrigation system, it's something that we need to really think about and watch out for.